welcome to the Metal Voice today on the show, Alan. Oh yes, Elena Ciarella. <laughs> that good? Perfect. <laughs> All right. Hey, you from see what Lee's you, eyes. You see what I did there? I, I handed yeah, it I off to him. Yeah, he does that nice, <laughs> nice touch. Yeah. yeah, first time on the Metal Voice. Welcome. Yes, thank you very much for having me. My pleasure. Yeah. So uh, on March 22nd on AFM Records, Myths of Fate is going to be released. Very exciting. So I'll let Indeed. Alan start it off. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. Yeah, I mean, I can't stop listening to it. It's uh, another great album by Leaves Eyes. And, uh, you know, I've been listening to you guys since uh, we came from, with the, from the Northern Winds. And, you know, that had a making of movie, the concert movie where there was a Viking boat built. And, uh, of course, the DVD and CDs. What are we looking at different this time around uh, on tour? Is it going to build a, a castle? or? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never know with us, you know. In Vakken, Alex almost burned his hair once more. <laughs> so, who knows what happens this time? But, you know, with the club shows, you're always a little bit restricted. So, um, unfortunately, no boat this time. <laughs> have you ever get? Have you ever got like hit by a sword or by mistake or some sort of? Yes, it happens, uh, right? I did, but it wasn't Alex. It was a uh, actually it was in in US. I can't remember exactly where, but uh, we have some Vikings there, and they were going on stage a little bit too slowly, so I had to rush, and the <laughs> the girl swung the sword and it hit me here. Oh no! So, luckily, not in the eye, but it was fine. But yeah, that one time. So, but so I mean, you is, guys are such sorry. You're just such a great multimedia band, right? I mean, you're doing these fantastic, well-crafted videos, uh, beautiful scenery, beautiful costumes. How, how much do you enjoy making those? Yeah, well, I mean, now as maybe you know, Alex has taken over the the videos as well, so he's actually filming and editing wow. and everything. So it's really a lot of work, and he's doing a great job. It's, I think the videos are looking absolutely incredible. And it's always fun. I mean, now we did five videos. It was really a lot of work, of course, but also got to go to great places, meet some great people and uh, freeze my hands a few times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. <It> was... <laughs> Holding that apple with the blood on it, that must have been the uh, yeah. You guessed yeah. it right. Yeah, I was really, <laughs> really suffering. But, you know, it looks really great. And, and of course, it's all about bringing these songs to a live also in visual way. So it's, it's really great. You know, I, I saw one of the videos I'm trying to remember which one where you're on a cliff and, and I'm assuming that's a real cliff where the water is at the bottom. It doesn't seem like a green screen. Is that a real cliff? I'm just, that's what I want to know. Oh, of really course. Right yeah. Yeah. It's that's in like, Iceland. <laughs> did, you, did you use a, a sort of like a drone to do that shot? <laughs> is that what it was? Okay. Yeah. It, it, it was a really interesting place. Uh, it had like a kind of bridge where I'm standing. Yeah, I think exactly. that's what you mean. That's what I mean. And yeah, it was, I mean. yeah, maybe two meters. So yeah, I was a bit like, whoa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and not so, so secure, but yeah, it looks really awesome. And they go sing, 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 yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, okay, I might fall here. It's it's more like shouting, no, Elena, no. And then you start <laughs> the thing, oh, no, okay. <laughs> Like you yeah. said, Alexander's, you know, not only is he producing, he's writing, he's now he's directing. What, what What's he like as a person? And then you can explain maybe what he's like as a lyricist as well. Well, I mean, he, as you can maybe tell, he is like a multi-talent who is uh, very much perfectionist and likes to do, be involved uh, in every way, of course. Uh, music and all, now also in the videos and everything. I mean, he, he was before, but now he's literally doing everything himself. So he is a little bit of a workaholic. We have to kind of keep him in, in check sometimes, you know, take some time as well and don't <laughs> kill yourself, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, the results are, of course, great. Uh, great that come from that. You know, we always joke that Sabaton's like a history lesson in every every one of their songs. But I mean, you guys, you've got the Norse god and myths uh, market cornered, right? So the, the lyrics uh, from, from all your albums uh, going way back is always uh, focused on that that aspect of uh, medieval times or, or the Norse legends and gods. So, Yes, I mean, this album is 
a little bit more towards this mystical and magical objects and people and places uh, as you know our previous album for example the last viking was a little bit more focused on the historical side of things and uh, it was a concept album of battles and everything so this is a little bit away from that topic which was also i think a nice refreshment you know, for, for us to do a little bit something different. I don't mean, of course, I know Leaves Eyes has done that before, but you can still <laughs> always find uh, new topics and also write from a different angle, even about the same topic. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of things to take inspiration from. So it's not a concept album altogether. It's just different, different Norse stories, right? A collection yeah. of them, right? Yeah, exactly. It's not a concept album, but of course, myths of fate. It's it's you know it it builds around these magical and mystical topics. But no, it's not per se a concept album. No. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you got a lot of songs. What I call the Beauty and the Beast vocals, right? You got your beautiful ethereal sound, and then Alex comes in with almost the growl vocals. There's quite a few on here. But one track that really stood out for me that I thought was different for Levi's this go this time around was In Eternity, and I take it that you wrote that song. Yes. Um, yeah, it was uh, back in 2022. Um, uh, maybe maybe you read the story already, but it was. A little bit sad one as I came home in January from Alex's mom's funeral, uh, where I was also singing and um, yeah, it wasn't a great feeling, of course, coming back home. And uh, then I, I wrote this song. It just came came from that feeling and um, a lot of mixed feelings. Um, and I wrote like a kind of synth uh, vocal demo, uh, which I usually do when I write. I don't play drums. So I can do like really basic stuff, but you know, I leave that rather the, for the people who know better. And uh, so then the guys uh, worked on the song and, and made the, you know, we made together the full band version and I, I really love how it turned out. Um, and I, yeah, it's kind of like a very personal song, but also fits in the album very well. Uh, I, I think the whole topic of, life death has always been fascinating to to people and it's kind of this tribute for our ancestors and for their lives and 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 the legacy and everything and of course to to alex's mom mom and the the gang vocals at the end that's really something different i mean you might hear that on an accept album but i didn't expect that on leaves eyes album so uh, so which part do you mean? No, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, don't get me to sing that. So that'll be yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, let, let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, um, yeah, I know. It was, I, I wanted to be quite, in general, I wanted to, the song to be raw, let's say simple in a good way. Um, I wanted to be, yeah, pure. And also with the video, I think it's all just fits together very well. Um, and, and that was kind of like this, almost tribal feeling of it you know like a trance or some like a ritual or something that you're singing yeah it, it's that's how i just i think that was almost the second part i came up with after the chorus line let me ask you this after after now you've been in the band what six years now is that it has it been six yeah years? 2016 yeah so yeah. like, no, like you, know, you, had, you, you had like ozzy and he go and then ronnie james Dio goes into black sabbath did do you still are, are all the are all the fans now convinced that you are you know you fit well and the band is going on great and or was there or are there still some fans you see some signs saying you know we want to live back or the greatest singers get that because people are accustomed to you know a, a voice and do do you have you been accepted very well by the fans today? I guess that's the question. Uh, well, for me, I mean, you have to ask ask them. I mean, I'm sure there's always <laughs> people, I don't know. people, you know, that think differently. But for me personally, um, I felt very accepted from the beginning. I mean, for me, it was very clear that I needed to come to the band as myself. I'm a different, completely yeah. different voice, different kind of performer. Uh, so for me, it was, you know, taking the time and trying to, do my best in the situation back then and of course then now many years later we have you know three albums and whatnot we've been touring over the world and uh it's a different 
different position now for me as well but uh, i never really thought about it like that for me when we played live which was like two weeks after i joined the band <laughs> it was always great uh, and i never had any any really negative things uh, you, so yeah because i that's why i give you the analogy of ozzy osbourne and ronnie james dio two great singers right <laughs> but, yeah but but even ronnie james dio he felt a little heat from the very hardcore fans right as great as he was right because there's a transition right yeah right? yeah and, and you know i think that's natural i think always in these situations and it's also fine and it's normal you know as as long as it's opinions and, and matter of very subjective you know uh, i have my own opinions as well about music and singers and, and everything so you know it's nothing wrong with that it's just like uh, as you say, if people would be uh, somehow rude or something, then of course it's not okay. But I, I never really had that. So, so Ozzy or Ronnie James Dio, which do you like better? <laughs> and Black Sabbath. I don't know. My love, oh, right? My God. <laughs> well, that, that's that's um, that's almost impossible. They're so different. How can yeah, you? That, and, and that's a perfect <laughs> example, isn't it? It's a perfect yeah, example. Exactly. But saying that, you know, I listen to Goddess of the Night, which really I find shows your vocal range. And how do you explain that, how your voice differs from Liv's? Ah, okay. Uh, that's actually also really interesting uh, how people listen to your voice because the range is actually not the biggest in that song at all. Oh, but okay. the thing is that because it's a ballad and my voice is maybe a little bit more, more in the in the front, then it yeah. comes like shows like, oh, wow. <laughs> Just for me, very interesting. Um, uh, I mean, I can only speak again from my side, how I see it, but uh, I would say that I'm probably my voice is a bit stronger in the sense of, of uh, my forte is not singing with a very light and heady voice, head voicey stuff. That's not my forte. Uh, and of course, I have a classical uh, uh, education in, in, you know, in the past. And even though I don't want to be classified as only one thing or another thing, uh, and even on this album, I think I'm showing that I'm, you know, versatile using my voice. Uh, but that, yeah, certain things will never be my forte. And then I think, you know, the whole timbre of the voice is different. Uh, it's it's just sounds different. It's not the same kind of, yeah, timbre is the word I would I would use yeah, in this. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Tell Jim, before the interview, it sounds like you have uh, more of a bottom end that, uh, compared to a live in the past, which, like you said, had that higher, higher voice. It seems to be a, a bit of a more fuller, fuller sound, like you, like you said. But, but I also, to, but, so. but but if you look at her sing, you Yulina sing, like your mouth doesn't move a mouth, so you know it's all coming from down here, right? It's very operatic, and <laughs> right, it, they are usually the operatic sort of singers. The mouth doesn't move that much, and it just the power just comes out well, in the diaphragm. If you look at the or look at the pictures, where I go. Ah! <laughs> You're like faking that part. The mouth is moving a lot. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. But you know what I'm saying. Like usually, when people are singing like really powerful from the diaphragm, it, it, there's less here and there's more here. Yeah, it, it's it's a combination combination of style as well. If you look at, for example, Nora from Battle Beast, she's also using the power, but she's still opening the mouth a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's interesting observations. All of this. <laughs> So, so the album's coming out on March 22nd, but the tour dates start on the 14th. You're going to have like six or seven uh, tour dates under your belt before the album's released. How come it's, is, that happened? Uh, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. Uh, but for, for us, it's uh, actually not such a problem, or let's say, because we have a lot of singles out. We have so many videos and uh, there's still one more coming so oh wow you know, people already heard very nice overview of the album and they they can make already their minds uh if they want to buy it i think and i hope they will and i hope they will love it also live and i think that's the age we're in where people are our bands are releasing more videos to 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 pump up the album before it's released right mm -hmm. and, and yes and, yeah 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 um, tell me about uh, the the sons of Tregalv. Is it Tregalv? Is that pronounced properly? Uh, Treglav. Treglav. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me, tell me about that concept. 
Uh, well, yeah, that, that would be the best question to our friends uh, in in, uh, in Poland, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, Igor or Alex would tell you uh, one hour of, of that song, but it's basically the, <laughs> high level, the, high level, high level. The three <laughs> three headed uh, god uh, Triglav that was worshipped uh, by these people, and I was told that even much later on it was basically hidden so that it wouldn't be destroyed. So it was a very sacred thing uh, to okay. these people. No, it's okay. It's good. People could look it up and they could understand the story. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And who did the artwork? Again, all your all your album oh, covers yeah, are always really so good. well done and beautiful. Who who did the artwork this time? Yeah, it's uh, the same uh, um, Stefan Heilemann. So so he uh, Alex had the concept idea for the for the cover. We wanted to use the three Norns, uh, uh, the weavers of the fate. And uh, then he told me, oh, yeah, by the way, you're going to be the <laughs> three norms. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so then I was, yeah, painted all white. And it was, it was uh, also a really interesting photo shoot. And, and yeah, Haile all, 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 always makes really, really great uh, artworks. So it was just, you know, you give him the, the idea what we look for, and, and he, he really makes it great. You know, so you're you're on the bridge, you're modeling, you're singing. Like, what else can you do? I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but next, S What's the sail, next? sail with the dead. You just want to tell me about that song a little bit? Yeah, um, that is that's like, that's like one of my favorite ones. I thought it was a great song. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting track for sure. It has a little, uh, the um, you know, I speak Finnish, English, and German, and sometimes I can't speak any language. I can't think of the word in any language. But uh, it's the odd, odd time signature that uh, makes it quite interesting track as well. It's about basically this um, giant who is riding uh, a boat that's made of the nails of the dead. Oh, boy. That's uh, cool. I like that. Yeah, and he's following the, the trail of the serpent who is to do with the Ragnarok, so... Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great story as well, and I think this song just brings out the story extremely well. I think that's what I like about the album, is all these little stories, and you mm -hmm. could further pursue them and just really get into them, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the, just the video for Realm of the Dark Ways, I mean, that's a great video, tells a, a little story, another one, and uh, yeah, it's it's nice to have these little vignettes, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all the under underwater footage with the mermaid and everything, it's, it's just visually very striking. Of course, Iceland as well. I mean, it's, it's just incredible. Is there is there anything you want to promote, uh, you know, before we let you go? Well, um, on top of this, I don't think so. I mean, you know, celebrating 20 years of Leaf's Eyes and I've been in the band almost half of it. And it's it's just a great celebration to bring this album now out going on tour, finally being, you know, releasing new music and, and meeting people, finally playing live. So I just really hope people love the album as much as I do. And uh, I hope to see everyone on the road. Yeah, the production, the guitar sounds, everything, your voice. Uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's, a, it's everything we expect from Leaves Eyes. Let's just say that. Awesome. Nice to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Any chance of a North American date? That's what I was going to say. So, yeah, yeah, this keep, everybody keeps asking this. <laughs> so I think now is the time that we really ha have to come back. I mean, it's been too long and uh, we had plans and then the pandemic came. So now uh, let's really hope we can make it happen finally and, and it would be great. All right. On that note, March the 22nd, AFM Records, Myths of Fate. Pick it up. I know Alan really loves it, and I do like oh, it too. I like, I like Sirala, everything but... you guys do. Yeah. And our guest, Alina Sirala. 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 That's yeah. what I said. That's what I said. Thank the emphasis on. is on the seer. <laughs> Thank you for being on. A pleasure, and uh, wish you all the success. Thank yeah. you. My pleasure.